this series, I'm painting a randomly determined space marine, with both the colour scheme and the artistic style picked by spinning two wheels. This time... Blood Angels. Never painted Blood Angels before, so this could work with a lot of different styles. Let's see which one I get. Oh, okay. Right, that's going to look sick, actually. <laughs> the name of the game today is Filth. Filth, bridge, filth, bridge. I'm going to try and make the dirtiest Blood Angel possible. To do that, I first assembled an intercessor with a few little trinkets and then base coated him with Rhinox hide with a small zenithal of Rhinox with a bit of XV88. And I did this in two sub assemblies because my painting method for this project isn't going to be the most uh, delicate. I took a piece of sponge from an old blister pack and sponged on the armour, starting with corn red, then working up to, appropriately, Mephiston red, and finally a bit of Evil Sun's Scarlet. To get to a few of the smaller details, I also stippled on the colours with a small dry brush, aiming for an overall zenithal highlight. This was the first time I'd ever used sponging on a model, and I must say, it was really fun. Like, I'm normally a very in-between-the-lines, neat kind of painter, so this was refreshingly quick. The, the model was battle-ready in, like, five minutes. But I didn't think that the armour was looking quite beaten up enough, so I took my small dry brush and stippled on some rune fang steel, aiming for the bits of armour that would just naturally lose their paint, like the edges. And then painted up the metallics using lead belcher and retributor armour, and added some highlights by adding in silver to those colours. I painted one knee pad black, I'll be honest, I still don't understand Blood Angel's iconography, but I saw this, I think it was on the GW uh, Intercessors kit, and thought, fine, th that, there's uh, one example, I'll follow that. And then also base coated the leathers in Mornfang Brown. And then it came to the step that I was counting on to do the majority of the heavy lifting for this project. I made an oil wash of about equal parts burnt umber and black. By the way, can no one cook umber properly? Like, why are these the only two options? And I just slathered it on the model, like, really quite thick. And then, after leaving it for about half an hour, I took some small makeup sponges and delicately removed some of the oil wash. I'm very guilty of, when I've done this before, taking off too much of the wash, so I erred on the side of caution this time. And with this all done, I sealed it in with some ultra matte varnish from AK through the airbrush. This definitely did what I wanted it to do. It really brought the shadows down, it made it look very grim dark. But a side effect of doing washes like this is you just lose basically all contrast. So, to try and bring some back, I stippled on some. Some more rune fang to the armor, picked out the joints of the armor in grey, and added some more traditional highlights to the metallics and to the leathers using some XV88 and then a bit of flayed one flesh for the extreme highlights. At this point I assembled the model and I felt like it was still lacking some contrast, so I stippled in some more Mephiston red to the armor in a zenithal pattern, and that really punched up the saturation contrast of the model. And then the eyes. I've had a whole saga with my Harder and Steenbeck Infinity airbrush. I've got a kit that has two needles, one of which is a 0.15mm, and long story short, I've only just been able to get it working. So I thought this was the perfect opportunity to use it and punch up the contrast of the model again and give it some spooky, glowing green eyes. So I painted the lenses white and then airbrushed some white ink in the surrounding area for the glow effect. And it was way too much. It was a bit of a disaster, and I had to try and dial it back desperately with some brushwork. The previous step was for the value of the glow, now it's time to add the colour, so I put some warpstone glow through my airbrush, and this was a complete disaster. Like, this was... I, there are so many clips of me just desperately trying to save this model, first with the airbrush, and then resorting to regular brushes, and I think it just about worked. I think it's, I think it's okay. <laughs> I think the step that actually saved it was the white oil wash that I did just in the recesses around the eyes to kind of sell it as that's the most the brightest part where the light is coming from. I've learned some lessons I think in how I use the airbrush. I think next time will be better. This is okay. And speaking of okay, at this point I thought the model looked pretty good, but it was not as filthy as it could be. So I took some sterling mud out and I slathered it over the legs of the model and then gave it a coat of hard coat to make it look like really glistening, claggy mud. The transfers went on and that just left the base, which at the suggestion of my friend Joe, I thought I'd do as a marble base. I had this narrative in my head that this was a blood angel who'd been slogging through these hellish, 
wet defensive trenches and you know burst into the city that was being defended and into a temple and just traipsed mud all over their floor. <laughs> There are loads of tutorials on YouTube for how to do marble bases, but the basic steps are, first of all, sand down the base so it's completely flat, and then add colour to the base that you want the veins of your marble to be. In my case, I knew I wanted them to be green because the eyes of the model were green and it would sort of tie the whole thing together. Then you take a baby wipe, dry it out in the sun, and then tease it apart until you've got fibres showing. You then secure that to your base, really secure it, and then airbrush through some greys and whites. And it's that simple. This was the first time I'd ever done this, and I was convinced after waiting for about half an hour that I was going to peel it off and it was going to look like ass. And no, I, I was genuinely stunned when I did this. It it looks great, first time. So I applied some gloss varnish to the base, attached the model, and then I just had to add a bit more sterling mud, and of course, a messy footprint, and Blood Angel was done. This guy was faster than the previous projects. I think I spent eight to 10 hours, maybe, on the model, and it was really fun. Uh, it was really fun to experiment with different techniques. Like I said, I've never done sponging before. I'm no not normally this kind of painter, like a grim, dark, messy painter, and, um, it was a fun experiment that, honestly, I could see myself doing an army like this. As well as the technique being different though, I really like that the end result is a model that I came up with a narrative for. Normally, when I come up with models, I don't think of how they got to that place and time, like how they arrived at that base. You know, sometimes I've got a theme, sure. But this guy, I actually had like a, a, a narrative to him and I think I'd like to do more of this going forwards. I've, I've definitely learned lessons, both technically and in uh, how you approach painting from, from doing this. I'm just really enjoying this project. This guy's completely different from the previous two Marines. So that's three models in the Random Astartes project completed, all in different styles. And, well, next month's going to be different again. Next month, I am going to be painting... Nice. Love salamanders. <laughs> there is definitely one style on this wheel that I really hope we avoid. And the style of the salamander is going to be... Oh! Oh! oh. Okay. I don't know what that's going to look like. <laughs> 